That's, that's big hail and that's strong winds. Um, so let me break down what she just said. She's basically saying that the strongest storm in our area, even though that is a severe thunderstorm warning, potential for some hail, strongest storm's right here. And it's hitting Sullivan now. It also has the potential to turn into a tornado warning because it is rotating. But it's not a tornado warning right now, so it's not rotating strongly enough. Radar notices rotation up above, and if we see it really strong up above, then we assume maybe it's translating down to the ground, because the ground is what matters. Where we are, damage-wise, is what matters, not what's above the ground. So right now, it's rotating up above the ground, not on the ground. Let's watch it closely, and I'll show you. You can see this thing spinning. Uh, let me show you the radar Doppler winds here. I'll zoom back in for you. And you'll see exactly where that location is, where it's spinning. And um, there's no tornado warning on this, but it, it, should it intensify, the section where it is rotating is actually buried in rain. So this is not something in southern Franklin County if folks want to go out and see. And don't forget, too, there's a threat for real strong 70-mile winds and large hail out of this as well. Um, I am going to slow the loop down here a little bit so you can see this, but you can almost see the red kind of curl around the green. Notice how the red curls around the green. So this storm is spinning, and what that red is is it's raindrops that are going away from the radar, and then the green are raindrops that are going towards. So if you can imagine it like this, and then the green are raindrops that are going towards, that is a broad or large rotation. Typically, when you have a tornado warning, you have a much smaller area. And so we'll have to see if it tightens up. Um, when things tighten up up above the ground, then you know there's potential for it to be producing damage and spinning strongly enough on the ground. But that would be exactly where it is, and you can almost kind of see the rotation in there. And that is now moving east of Sullivan. So no tornado warning on it, but that has our eyes. There are some other threats, though. Damaging winds up to 70 miles an hour and uh, large hail out of that. The hail tracker will give us an idea of the couple cores. Um, not as strong as what we saw earlier, which we actually kind of see if I loop this for you, which is encouraging. So you see the loop out here, real strong, kind of flared up into the, some pinks right there in Gascony County. Not as strong, but I'll bet there's got to be at least quarter size hail coming out of that. And then the threat for some uh, damaging winds. The other thing is, um, and I think you, you said it, the bowing that's going on here. Uh, so if you look at this storm line, see how it looks like a bow from a bow and arrow? And that's because the strongest part of this whole storm is right here through Sullivan. So that's why my eyes are fixated there. Now, you can still end up with some severe thunderstorm warnings on this southern flank. And I told you that Lee is going to keep an eye on that for our friends in southern Crawford, Washington counties. It looks like if we did get some warnings, it would be kind of the borderline severe warnings where it's 60 mile an hour winds, quarter size hail. We want you to know about it. Here's my advice. Anywhere along this line, just be inside and away from windows and let this pass, even if you're not in a warning. Because I think that southern flank has at least the potential to take down some tree branches. You see how there's no yellow boxes, no warnings there? So at the very least, when this comes through, just be inside away from windows in that southeastern part of Crawford County and into Washington County. Then we have this section of the storm, which is the strongest part, and that little notch right there is where we have air flowing up into and then around and east of Sullivan, rotating. Not strongly enough to warrant uh, a tornado warning. Then as you go north, the line is really not all that organized, although as I say that, I look at this one cell that... Um, News 4's Alex Gall is hearing sirens in Pacific. Um, I don't know if they're seeing anything before the warning has been issued. And if you have emergency management or you have law enforcement that sees something, that could be how they sound them. Uh, it also could be that um, they're sounding them because of the severe thunderstorm warning. I don't know. Each, each municipality, and I don't see any strong rotation there. Maybe they saw a funnel cloud. Um, if they did, and this is Pacific, 
you know, if they did, it would be on this kind of southern flank coming into Pacific's right about here. Here's Eureka. But I don't see any real strong rotation. There's no tornado warning on this now. And something you may not know is the National Weather Service does not uh, sound the sirens. Municipalities or counties do that. It depends. And they're all different. And they all have different rules. And that's okay. But some of them may sound them when you have real strong winds and potential for hail coming in. And maybe, and I don't know this, maybe there's kids' baseball games going on in Pacific. The sirens are outdoor warning system, outdoor. And so they may be issuing the, or sounding the sirens because they want anyone that's outdoors to get inside and get more information. Turn on channel four, we'll tell you what's going on. And what is going on is this is a really heavy storm with the potential for some hail, some 60 mile an hour winds coming into Pacific now, and anyone outside should be inside. So there's no tornado warning on it right now. I don't see any real strong rotation. Um, I've got a video that was just sent to us. Yeah, um, please share. If, if you wouldn't mind me pulling it up real quick. Please, go ahead. Uh, but it just, it's showing the outer edges of that storm that was near Sullivan, Missouri, and it looks very scary, but this is what's called a shelf cloud. And essentially when you see this, it's just a sign of strong winds. It just looks like a, a shelf above the ground. And certainly we saw those strong winds in Sullivan, Missouri, and those storms are continuing to track to the Northeast. I think we need to probably pop up a track on those hold, soon. Hold on one second, keep that video going. So that shelf right there, but see how it pans? That's a wall cloud right there. And what that is, is that's air rushing up into the storm. And as the air rushes up really, really fast, it cools the air and you get the condensation, you get the clouds. But what I notice, and this is the thing, not all wall clouds rotate. Wall cloud is a lowering from the main cloud. So we see that, right? But we don't see any spinning especially you would want to see pretty rapid, consistent spinning. So shelf cloud, wall cloud, that's just air going up into the storm. It's SLC, scary looking cloud, not producing a tornado, really low to the ground. Sometimes we call them scud clouds. They're very scary looking, I know, but no tornado warning on that. That's why you need to check in with, uh, with us. Uh, the National Weather Service will issue the tornado warnings. We'll be analyzing on radar. We'll let you know what's going on. Do you mind uh, updating the status of the watches and warnings for us right now? Yes. Yeah, we haven't updated that in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the, probably the main thing that we're concerned about, obviously, is that tornado warning. And most of our counties within the purple you can see are included in that. There's just a couple counties out in Illinois not in that tornado watch. It goes until 10 p.m. So that's the main window from now until 10 p.m. where we're going to be seeing uh, certainly tornado potential. So that means that ingredients are there. We've had had a couple earlier tornado warnings, nothing right now, but we still have those high wind warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, and that's another thing we're watching. And then the severe thunderstorm watch, that's just for our counties out to the west, uh, Phelps County and Gascony counties in that watch until 7 p.m. So that expires in just under, or just over an hour. And we'll have to see how they are going to be updating that warning. Let's get back to the warnings, too. One of them is where News 4's Alex Gall is. He's near where there's uh, some reports nearby, at least. He's not there, but Villa Ridge with ping pong ball size hail. That's in Villa Ridge, north of his location. We moved him south of the core of that storm cell. Uh, Alex, what are you seeing or hearing even? Are you hearing uh, hail coming down? Uh, Steve, we are currently here looking west at 44. This is in Pacific. Uh, we have not seen hail yet. We are starting to see rain come down here just in the last couple of minutes. And like we mentioned a couple minutes ago, the sirens going off here too. But there are some big droplets coming down on the car right now. Yeah, it, it sounds like you're in a, and you're south of Pacific, right? Uh, I think we, we lost. South of the highway, correct. Just right south of your highway. Okay. So you are going to get clipped by this. If you guys want to move a little farther south, go ahead, just to get out of some of that hail. You only need to go about three miles south, and you'll be, you'll be out of it. Um, but we, we did also get um, a report from uh, the National Weather Service of a, I think they put out a flood warning or a flash flood warning. Let me, let me double check on that on this. This is a flash flood warning. So, and remember we were talking about, hey, this thing's not moving very fast, so they did issue a flash flood warning on this, and that comes right up into Pacific. So when, when you do come back up north, Alex, and you hit 44, and maybe you go farther west, uh, just a heads up, there could be some, some flash flooding in spots. That's in Franklin County, about 22,000 people in a flash flood warning there, and that is one of the warnings 
uh, that we have going. Otherwise, there's another one to the southwest, and that same area is going to hit where you've had that slow-moving cell. So I think especially from Union to, say, Villa Ridge, Pacific, Eureka, let's be really on guard. And they're heading south, by the way. So, so there's the storm. They're going this way. So they're still going to get hit by this storm. We're going to have to watch that for them. But I wanted to get them just out of the immediate danger. And you heard it, the hail, um, hitting their car. So I wanted to get them out of that. But see, this storm right here is going to hit an area that's already been hit so hard by this slow moving storm. Slow moving storm, hail producer. There's a little notch there we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, don't think I see any real significant rotation along there yet. Not at this point, but that's definitely got my eye. That is inflow coming into the storm and then wrapping around. So that just tells me there's a little bit of rotation right there. That's coming into Pacific. So again, maybe someone saw you know funnel cloud or saw something weird, or maybe the sirens were set off because of the hail and the winds. Um, and hail is coming down on Alex right now. Uh, Alex, do you have any idea, and this is gonna be hard for you to judge, especially as you're driving, but do you have any ideas you see them kind of smash on the pavement? what size you might be dealing with? Uh, judging by the sound, uh, it sounds like pretty significant size hail right now. Uh, it's hard to tell on the road right now what the size is. Uh, there, it seems to make with the rain. Totally understand. Just thought I'd ask if maybe you had, had a gauge there. Um, so... If you get two miles, that's two miles south of Pacific, you're gonna get out of it. So you'll be okay. Pretty soon, all of a sudden, it's just gonna to start to ease up. We just um, got uh, a damage report in Sullivan from those earlier winds that we were talking about. Um, this, is, this is unconfirmed, but it, it's coming through this information to us. But a, a roof is off of a building now in Sullivan, Missouri, uh, East Springfield Road and North Church Street. So that was reported earlier. Who did we uh, get that reported from? Was that Train Spotter or That EM? was from uh, an EM, an emergency manager. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, that storm, by the way, the rotation on it looks even uh, weaker farther down around Sullivan. There's still some rotation east, um, but I would say anywhere along that leading edge, you have the threat for some damaging winds. And I, I just also wanted to point out that where we showed Alex getting hit by you know, rain and hail, that's an area that's been hit pretty hard from Union. I'm gonna highlight it here, from Union to around Pacific by a slow moving storm. Well, now we have this coming in, right? So let's also be on guard for potential of further flash flooding in here um, because you got another storm coming your way. Uh, Alex, uh, News Force Alex Gall's in uh, storm mode Silverado and you can see them kind of hurrying south. I think they're probably within just a few minutes of getting out of any kind of hail, but you hear it, you hear it. And there's a lot of folks hearing hail hitting their house right now. Uh, 16,000 people in this warning that covers Sullivan where we did have damage, reports at least at this point of a roof off of a building or house, I believe you said it was. Mm -hmm. That's 44 in Gray Summit. Remember that's where that uh, hailstorm you've been hearing, Alex Gall, well, north of there, uh, actually deeper into the core where there's probably larger hail, that's where we have uh, now 240,000 people that are in that warning. And that's because it's right around um, Pacific, Villa Ridge, coming into Eureka, and goes right into the St. Louis metro. So, you know, if you're wondering what, what's going on, why are they, why are they still on the air? Um, we don't have tornado warnings, but we have hail. We have a storm that has a history of producing 96 mile an hour winds, could still be producing 60, 70 mile an hour winds. That's the one farther to the south. Um, and this particular cell with the hail and a little bit of rotation that we're keeping an eye on here, just south of 44 near Pacific, has 240,000 people, so a quarter of a million people uh, that are in the warning, and many are gonna be hearing the hail, and I wanna just make sure that you're prepared and alert and get inside, get away from windows as this passes. Again, no tornado warning on this right now. I've been keeping an eye on the rotation to the south. That looks weaker. The rotation near Pacific is, um, it's rotating for sure, and it's something we're gonna need to keep an eye on, but it's not real tight and, and real strong at this point. But see that little hook right there? That's what I'm watching, and that's coming towards Eureka. So let's zoom in on this storm and give you an idea of where it's headed next. And I'm going to, 
I'm, I'm really going to have to get a better idea of the, um, the timing on this because it came out at 40 miles an hour, and I really don't think that's how fast it was moving. So what you're witnessing me do just in real time is backtrack a half hour before. So there's 12 miles, so that would be about 24, 25 miles per hour. Um, and so now let's go to where the radar is now. And I'm going to put a track on it at 25. So now that I have kind of an accurate track. And I'm, what I'm going to track is Hale Core, which is here north of 44. Remember, we moved Alex south of 44. So here's the Hale Core and all the way down to where that rotation is. What are we looking there in the left-hand side of the screen? That's MoDOT, right? 44 at six flags, hmm. pulled over. So 240,000 people in a severe thunderstorm warning. We got cars pulling over. We got a little rotation to watch on the southern flank of this storm. Uh, and the potential for some short-term flooding, because remember, this thing's not moving very fast, although it has sped up from 15 to now 25 miles per hour. Okay, six flags in seven minutes. So what that means is they're pulling over because of this rain. Well, imagine when that hits them. And that's going to be not only just a deluge of rain, but it's also going to be with some hail, maybe some ping pong ball sized hail. So that image you just saw of how dark it was is actually not the worst part of the storm at Six Flags. It'll be there in about seven minutes. Wildwood, I know you're getting hit hard now, about 11 minutes, you're gonna get the northern flank of that storm. And then don't forget the southern flank down here. That's in Eureka in about 10 minutes. And that southern flank probably doesn't have as much hail although we know it has hail because Alex was driving through it. Remember, I placed him down here versus up here, so he's out of the hail core, but then we started to see that rotation, so I said, hey, go farther south. Get a, just get away from this. I don't like that look. I didn't want him here. That's where the rotation is, so Alex should be actually, if there's specific, Alex should be down here by now, um, and that is News 4's Alex Gall uh, on the road, and, and I don't think he has hail anymore and not much rain, so I think we got him to a safe spot, but there's the track for you. Um, and let's get a little more in depth. I always like these aero trackers that give us a little uh, better, more specific idea of the timing. Leah, can you type in 25 for me? We're going to go 25 miles per hour. When she does that, it. that rotation would be near Eureka in about eight minutes. What do we got coming They just in? extended the warning to now include Jefferson, St. Louis, or Washington County. And they have the tornado possible tag on that new warning that's just coming out. Okay. Ooh. New warning Big here. Warning. Rotation right here. And I think there's probably still some residual rotation mm -hmm. from what was near Sullivan right about here. So there may be actually two spots that I need to keep an eye on. So I was tracking a little rotation, of course, some hail up near Eureka. And I want to finish that. And then I'm going to go to this new warning. So you really have kind of two storms going on here. You have a line that actually a part of it up here that I draw from the north is not in a warning right now, but you have this entire line. I just think anywhere along this line, just be inside, be away from windows when it hits. But obviously, the yellow boxes highlight where the best, best potential for severe winds are, large hail, and of course, we're monitoring a couple spots for rotation. Then you have this storm that I'm gonna get back to tracking, but I wanted to make sure we got you the newest information. And thank you to Leah, it takes a team, I really appreciate that. So jump in anytime you, you've got new information. I think you do. Yeah, I've got Go. a couple updates. Um, that storm that Alex was near in Pacific, we're starting to now get all those reports filtering in, and we're seeing ping pong ball size hail and even egg size hail. And then you have to think about, you have to combine that with the wind risk that we still have. So it's not just hail falling straight down, it's hail being blown in the wind, and that could certainly cause damage. And I'm not just talking to cars yeah that will certainly cause some damage to cars but it could knock against the siding on your house that large hail that we are seeing so all of those reports are starting to filter in and hopefully by this point everyone's already inside as the storm's blowing over and i wouldn't even consider going outside at least until the threat has passed which isn't going to be for quite some time but we're starting to see those reports come in and now we're starting to get reports of um, some snap trees due to mm. those uh, wind gusts. Uh, this is a report that just came in from Sullivan just a moment ago. Okay. So we're, we're seeing, starting to see some early signs of that damage due to the wind, and then that hail could still cause some damage, especially when it's being blown in those winds. And there's the MoDOT cam from Six Flags. Thank you, Leah. Really appreciate that. Please don't hesitate to jump in and, and give me great reports like that. Um, that really informs 
urgently what needs to be told, uh, which is what's happening now, and then I'll deal with the where it's going next. Um, that MoDOT cam, heavy, heavy rain. That was near Pacific right there. They're in the worst of it. Now, actually, that was near Eureka and Six Flags, I believe. Speaking of uh, Eureka, I mentioned that, that rotation. It's not strong enough right now to warrant a tornado. I just wanted to mention that's rotating. But even without it, see the cores coming in now? I mean, it's now coming into Eureka. Uh, large hail, damaging winds. Just be inside, away from windows. If you feel like, you know, I looked out the window before I went to my safe shelter in the house and it looked really bad and I, I feel like I want to be in the basement, go for it. Whatever makes you feel safer, but inside and away from windows is for severe thunderstorm warnings. And then if you feel like this is kind of a, a higher end or something, you don't feel like you're in a safe spot. Maybe you live in an area with a lot of trees and you're worried about you're on the first floor, a tree comes down through the roof, you're in trouble. Go ahead, go for the basement. Whatever makes you feel safe, but know that right now there's no tornado warning on this. It is a hail and a damaging wind threat. 29 minutes, it's going to be that would be about Fenton, by the way. Uh, Kirkwood in about uh, 20 minutes, just for the rain, actually. The core of that would be a little longer into Kirkwood. Just for the rain, a little heavier rain, because it is raining right now in Chesterfield, about nine minutes. And let's focus just on the core of that storm, too. Uh, there's the core, one of the cores. That would be uh, around... Uh Uh, town and country, De Pair in about uh, 24 minutes. And then it is uh, 6 p.m. We've got a 7.30 St. Louis City SC game. Um, and there's going to be people filing in. So, you know, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning for wind and hail on this storm right here. And what I'd like you to do is help me, help your friends, you know anyone that's going to that game? Maybe they don't have the KMOV weather app, so they're not aware of what's coming their way. I mean, not the core, but the rain, about 45 minutes. I mean, they may be out enjoying themselves, and we want them to have the heads up that they need to at least take shelter. Just be inside, away from windows when that storm hits, and know that it might be a while because there's a secondary storm back off to the west. So two storms, lots of yellow boxes, I'm gonna, let me give you the big picture here. We also have a tornado warning just outside our coverage area that we'll need to keep an eye on for our friends in Reynolds and Iron Counties. See that red box right there? That's not in our coverage area, but we will monitor it for sure. So while there are a lot of boxes on the screen here, it really highlights this is the section of the storm that has the best potential to produce damage. I still think anywhere down here in Washington County, be inside, be away from windows when that hits. Um, because there is that threat for maybe even strong winds that are 50, 55, just below severe criteria, and you don't have a warning, I'd still rather have you safe and inside. Plus, you don't want to get hit by all that rain that probably has some hail. But it gives you an idea that, you know, if you instead of focusing on the mess of boxes, you just focus on this is where the strongest storms are right now. And there's really two things I'm watching within this. One is this storm right here that has potential to produce some short-term flooding, especially with another line coming in behind it. This one's moving at about 25. This one's moving at about 40. It's going to catch up to this and absorb it. This one also has the potential to produce some large hail. We've had actually some reports of that. And I'm monitoring rotation on the southern flank that's near and probably east of Eureka. Okay, so that's one storm. Then there's this storm right here, and I haven't given that a lot of attention lately, so let's zoom in and see what's going on, because that has the threat for damaging winds, large hail, and it looked like there were two spots for rotation that I had to keep an eye on. One is in northern Washington County right here. This is east of Sullivan, but then deeper buried within this, it's a little tougher to find, and I'm going to have to see what it looks like in the Doppler winds, and I'm going to actually rotate, uh, loop it, actually. It's much, much weaker. That's great. So... I'm going to try to highlight it for you right there. That was a little of rotation that looks like it's kind of spun itself out a little bit. So that's good. And I don't see this one coming into Richwoods as being really intense or strong. So the severe thunderstorm on this has a tornado possible tag because there's some areas of rotation we need to monitor. But I'm not seeing anything immediately that warrants any kind of tornado warning uh, along that. And that is that line that came through Sullivan where there was a report. Can you reiterate that report from uh, emergency manager? Was it a... A roof blown off a... Yeah, roof, it was... Oh, I'll have to go back through and find it. But it was either a roof blown off a house or uh, some sort of structure. Okay. I'll have to find that report again. All right. Live from the KMOV Broadcast Center.
News 4 is in storm mode. Just about 6 p.m., I'm Chief Meteorologist Steve Templeton. First alert storm mode coverage continues as we have more warnings. Meteorologist Leah Hill is at my side. We've had large hail. We've had reports of wind damage and uh, a flash flood warning that's going on, too. I'll highlight all those warnings for you. First of all, there is a severe thunderstorm warning on a storm that's just pounding Eureka, around Six Flags, Wildwood. I'm zooming in, and you see the yellow box, but really the core is right here from around Wildwood and Baldwin south down to Eureka. Eureka. The threat there, and I'm going to get rid of the box to just highlight the core for you, and it's still a really intense core. The threat here is going to be some large hail coming out of this storm coming into Eureka right now and right around Wildwood and uh, Baldwin and south. So basically around Highway 100, Manchester there, and south. Look at these cores down 109. Um, do you want to pop up uh, Most Sacred Heart Church on BJC Cam? Just see what we got there. Let me know what inputs it in. So that's one warning. And we're monitoring the rotation on the southern flank, and I don't see it as being strong. That's great news. So just our friends in Eureka, we mentioned some rotation. It's not strong enough right now that I have any concern. Uh, we'll monitor it, but there's definitely a little bit of rotation right in here. Not too strong to warrant any kind of tornado warning. It is a severe thunderstorm warning. Okay, Were there's you warning a the Eureka camera? Yeah. It's it's, it's down too. Okay. Uh, we have another severe thunderstorm warning farther to the south. This one encompasses, it's now east of Sullivan where there was some roof damage, by the way. Uh, Union, be careful. You've got heavy rain coming down, but you're just outside of this severe thunderstorm warning. And it's the leading edge kind of right here and a little back into it from Richwoods um, back towards east of Sullivan that we have the threat for the strongest winds. I've been monitoring that for rotation as well. And yeah, you know, at times we're seeing a little spin, but we're just not seeing anything really strong that warrants, uh, that warrants a tornado warning, obviously, because the National Weather Service hasn't put one out. This one's moving a little faster at about 40 miles an hour off to the east, a little bit northeast. Here's some cities in the path of that second severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, Richwood's pretty much now, and you can see it getting into Morris Hill in 17 minutes, Scottsdale in 27 minutes. So that means uh, Jefferson County, you're up next on that. The other thing is the northern flank of this is going to run over over an area that's gotten hit by heavy rain, probably some large hail already. And as I loop this, you're gonna see it right here. This is the storm that's already hitting this uh, Union to Eureka and Pacific area. And that one still has a severe thunderstorm warning, but I just point out that while Union's not in a warning, severe thunderstorm warning now, you're getting heavy rain again coming right up this kind of Highway 50 and then into I-44 corridor through Pacific and Eureka. And that is an area where there is a flash flood warning. Uh, and I would say maybe even extend that a little bit just so, let's just say this, in and around the flash flood warning, be careful for some flooding, some standing water, ponding on the roads because of being hit by one storm with another storm coming. And you'll see that here. And this is the second storm coming that I don't see intensifying on the northern flank. I see it stronger down in southern, southwest, southeastern Franklin County. Let me highlight that for you and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the strongest part of this storm looks to be down here and not up north here. So that's the focus for the strongest winds, some hail cores there, some little areas of rotation that we'll monitor. So that's the strongest part of this storm, and that's coming into Jefferson County. So let's get a track on that. And uh, again, that's about 40 miles an hour. What I'm gonna do here is instead of the core, I'm actually gonna go with the leading edge, just where some of that rain is now. So leading edge here, cores here. Strongest winds are somewhere right in between, okay? <clears throat> Overman in about a minute, Hillsborough in about 17 minutes. So two severe thunderstorm warnings, one of which has in Eureka to Chesterfield, Kirkwood, uh, one of which has 235,000 people in it. That's this storm right here. So if you're wondering why we're, you know, still been on the air for a while, now here we are at News 4 at 6, and we continue with our coverage. This is why. 235,000 people in a warning, many of them getting affected by large hail. Um, our news force, Alex Gall, was being hit by it as well. And, uh, but we put him on the south side where it was smaller hail, and then he drove out of it. So he wasn't in the, uh, he wasn't in the worst of it. And that's news force, Alex Gall, right there. What Alex is looking at, actually, is a shelf cloud in the distance. Um, my, can you guys give me an idea of his location? Did, is he, on, is he in uh, Franklin County or Jefferson County? Um, 
But he's probably yes, we're looking. We're currently in Pacific right now. In Pacific. We're okay. looking north. And you're looking north. So you're looking at the next storm to come in. So he's in Pacific right here. And this storm has already passed him by. It's hitting Eureka now, Baldwin, Wildwood. And then the next storm is coming right in here. And I don't see, Alex, where you're looking to the north. I don't see anything really intense out of that line. I think it's much farther south of you. So I think you're, you're in a good spot as far as you know, winds and hail. But I would just uh, let you know that there could be some flooding. So if you guys come across any flooded out roads, just turn around, find a different route. Um, we're talking live on the air with our crews because they need that instant analysis sometimes, especially when you've got one storm here, another storm here, and they're kind of smack dab in the middle. The good news is I don't see any rotation, and that's really the key. Um, they've got radar. They know uh, where to be, and I always tell them when you see red boxes, don't be in a red box. Uh, and they're in yellow boxes. That's okay. Uh, I do see a red box to the south. That's not in our coverage area. That's a tornado warning. Let's keep an eye on that. We have meteorologist Leah Hill, who's also been monitoring our instant message chat with the National Weather Service and getting some reports of some of the damage. And she's heard of some really large hail and some damage reports coming in, even that roof off the home near Sullivan. So mm -hmm. while I just recapped some of the warnings we have here, why don't you tell folks the history that these storms have done as far as damage goes recently? Yeah, well, when they first came into the area, we got a report of 96, 97 mile per hour winds near Vichy, which is close to Rolla. And as they've continued to track to the northeast, we're still looking at 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. I haven't received any new wind reports uh, with these storms as of recently, but we're looking at hail reports. So my concern is that uh, we're getting hail that's anywhere from about half dollar size hail to even ping pong ball size hail. And when you have that mixed with these reports of high winds, 60 to 70 miles per hour, it's just going to be throwing those hailstones around. And now those storms starting to move into uh, the Baldwin area. I'm seeing reports of quarter size hail. They're starting to increase as they approach Baldwin, Chesterfield. Those are some of the newest reports that are coming in. And it's just on the kind of fringe of St. Louis County. And so we're starting to see those higher hail reports starting to trickle into more populated areas. So I imagine that more reports are going to be coming in here shortly and likely more wind reports with that. And I've zoomed in just to kind of street level map this out for you. You can see uh, south of 44 in Eureka, you're, you're getting hit hard. But see some of the purples on the north side? So as you go north on 109, that's where you're getting the, the larger core and the better potential for uh, some real large hail from Hilltop Ridge Drive right around 109. It's crossing 109 right now. We're now zoomed in pretty tight, but we're north of Eureka, north of 44. Uh, we also see on our MoDOT cams how dark it is. You see that on the left-hand side of your screen. So as I zoom in and kind of street level map some of this out, Hidden Valley, uh, Forest up 109 to uh, Old State Road. I mean, they, they're just getting dumped on with heavy rain. And you saw there in the image of uh, what it looks like. I mean, it just looks like the middle of the night, dark because of how heavy the rain is and probably some hail too. And I'm going up 109. And as you go a little farther north towards Wildwood, you're on the lighter side of this core. You're still getting hit hard. You probably have some hail. But right around 100 and 109, uh, it is a little lighter from Wildwood Grover and over to Baldwin. Uh, Ellisville looks like a core has developed around you, though. Uh, coming out of Old State Road and, and towards you. Go ahead. That was 44 and 109, I believe you were showing, and that's, uh, that's exactly what I'm zoomed in on. No, you were showing a MoDOT cam there. Um, 109 and 44, <laughs> look how dark that is. And notice how the cars have, some of them have their flashers. A lot of them do, trucks do too. Steve, uh, we just got a tornado warning. Go for it. Thank you. Uh, this, this just popped up. Um, Franklin and Jefferson counties until 7 p.m. So this is still radar indicated, no confirmation, but they're certainly seeing that rotation that we've been tracking some time, and it looks like it's tightening up a little bit. It is near yep. Richwood, moving 25 miles per hour. That's, that's slow moving compared to some of these storms that we've seen. Thank you. I appreciate that location and, and uh, speed. And it, uh, Richwoods, you're not in the tornado warning. It's actually just north of you, but it's very close. It's northeast. And um, it's going to cross the Franklin County and Jefferson County line very shortly. So a red box, thank you, Leah, for bringing this to our attention immediately. Uh, radar indicated, red box is the tornado warning. That's where the rotation is. And you said 25 miles an hour, um, yes. north or northeast? It is moving. Or more east? East. East, okay. So we'll push it off to the east and get you a track. The storm I was just 
tracking, by the way, I was talking about 109 and 44 and street mapping. Uh, that is not this location. Now we're farther south. So there's Eureka. We were at 109 and 44. Now we've gone south. This is southeastern Franklin County coming into Jefferson County. So we really have two storms. And the one on the left-hand side of your screen, you see 44 and 109, is the one up to the north around Eureka. The one down south here has rotation that at least radar mm. indicates a potential for a tornado. It doesn't guarantee it's going to be on the ground, but Hillsborough in about 20 minutes. And let's zoom in and see if there's any more rural towns that kind of pop up. Uh, most mm. Maupin, uh, this is most likely going to be south of Cedar Hill. And uh, we'll get rid of the, the red box. And what I'm also going to do is switch over to the Doppler winds to see that rotation right around Maupin now, headed towards Cottage Farm. And if it's 25, we've got that in our aero tracker. You're talking about 11 minutes. So this dark line right here is the Franklin County line, and then this is Jefferson County. So we're now in southwestern Jefferson County. So if you're in um, you know, Cedar Hill, if you're in Arnold, this is way south of you, but this is headed towards Cottage Farm and probably north of where, that's what that is right there, where uh, in about 11 minutes or so Cottage Farm, maybe 15 minutes in where. Let's get an idea of some other cities in the path of this. Hillsboro, um, not too far off. Let's see timing wise. If it holds its rotation. And remember, it is radar indicated. I don't see a, a real strong signature at this point, but it's strong enough for sure. I mean, we know this is rotating. We know it's right here. Uh, that definitely warrants a, a tornado warning. Question is, will it still have that rotation in about 25 minutes when it gets to Hillsboro? The other thing I'm going to do is back up a little bit and make sure that I've got that trajectory correct coming out of the uh, east. And that is moving way too fast. So let's slow this down. And it looks like it just strengthened. Weather Service did a good job of monitoring this and catching that. I mean, this just flared up, that rotation. So the rotation was really weak here. You got some real strong winds downpours, really, coming here. And then you have this interaction with those downpours and the inflow uh, right here. So that's where the rotation is. And I do think it's, it's somewhat of a new rotation, so it's hard to get a real good read, but it might have gone from just north of Richwoods and more to the northeast. This is why I do that. You got to analyze this on the fly. So I'm going to back, I'm going to toggle. It's a little bit northeast. And I'm going to show you. So there it is a few minutes ago. Here it is now. That helps me. I'm doing this all on the fly, so bear with me. I just want to make sure you get the most accurate read because I don't think this is going to come directly at Hillsborough, but maybe I'm more of a northeast slant. And if we put it a little bit north of east, and sorry, 25 miles per hour. So Hillsborough is now in the southern part of our cone here. And if that track like that, that may be just north of Hillsborough in between uh, Bellows Creek and Hillsborough in the next... 20 to 25 minutes. Did you get some new warnings coming in over there, Leah? This